Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be taking a look at some of the techniques myself and Sarah use when we're faced with shooting on the street in really bright sunshine and really contrasty light conditions. In the UK, we are really blessed with fantastic light when it comes to the summertime. The sunlight here tends to be very contrasty, very harsh. It's certainly not like the light you might see in France or Italy. It's uh, not conducive to great photography, particularly on the street, but by using it in different ways, we can actually use it creatively and get some really interesting photos. In our experience, strong sunlight tends to be better suited to color photography. When you have really bright sunshiny weather, color photographs can look better because you get that color depth, which you don't get in black and white. If we take a look at this image that was shot in France a few years ago, it was taken during the middle of the day. So the sun is very high in the sky. It's very harsh and it's very contrasty. As a color photograph, it kind of works because you have this repeating pattern of red going through the image from his trousers through to the barrier that's been set up on the pavement through to the signs in the shop window. If we were to shoot this in black and white, we have a bit of a visual mess. And that's really down to the harsh sunlight. What the sunlight has done is bring out all the texture in the pavement, all the texture in the walls. And those interesting bits like his trousers and the, the signs and those sort of things have now disappeared into the photograph. So the image has become a lot flatter, not in terms of contrast, but in actual sort of interest. If we look at this one in Cambridge, the image is primarily constructed of two colors, blue and yellow. If we convert this to black and white, all of a sudden we lose depth in the image. The colors have become flat now. He doesn't stand out anywhere near as much from the background. The people in the background almost disappear to nothing. The most common way that we work, if it's a really, really bright sunny day, is to work into the sun. So we're shooting straight into the sun itself. The light comes from behind the subject and these images here are what you would call classic silhouettes brought on by shooting directly into the sun. If you look at the shadows, the sun is directly behind them. It doesn't look as contrasty as some of the other images that we've just seen. There isn't so much of a silhouette. And that's because they are sitting on a promenade and the concrete is almost acting as a big reflector. And that's how I'm able to get so much light actually into their faces. So even though I'm shooting back into very strong sunlight, the fact that there's a pavement uh, in front of them allows me to balance the light in the background with the light in the foreground. This photograph by Sarah, again, if you look at the shadows, the sun is directly in front of her. She's shooting straight into the sun. The light is kicking off the pavement, so we get a lot of reflected light straight back into the faces of the people in the bus shelter. This is a little bit more dramatic. Because of the position of the sun in the sky, which is very high, the buildings that surround this guy have gone dark because they are in effect in their own shadow. The only light area is his hat as the sun strikes the top of his shoulders and that gives us the shape and form that we want for the photograph. And in this photograph, I'm shooting into the sun, but she's right on the edge of the shade that's being created by the ice cream kiosk. And what that does is it allows the sun to illuminate her, but send the background into darkness, which gives us this lovely sort of 3D effect here Sarah shot directly into the sun again. The sun has illuminated the dirty glass in this shelter and it's created this kind of diffuse sort of softbox kind of feel to the image. By using this technique, you can get a very atmospheric image, even though we are still effectively shooting into the sun.
One of the issues that we have with shooting directly into the sun is flare. And it doesn't help that both myself and Sarah use filters on our cameras. Sarah, because she's using a monochrome camera, like a monochrome, always uses a yellow filter in front of her lens. And because I spend so much of my time on beaches and at the sea, I always use a protective filter on the end of my lens. Now with a rangefinder camera, I've got no idea of how the light is hitting the lens. So I can't control the flare at all. I'm just hoping that if there is flare, it works out okay. The second technique that we use is to always try and work in the shade if we can. Now it's harder when you're working on a beach and it's a lot easier when you're working in a city. So here in France, Sarah's shot these couple of kids walking through the, the town and she's in shade. As you can see in the photograph, the light is lovely. It's beautifully controlled. Great expressions, the girl looking back at camera, the, the girl on the left who looks a little bit grumpy. She's probably a British tourist. And the guy in the background there who's looking at these girls. Now, a little bit later, I shot the same girls, but I was shooting from an alleyway. But this photograph doesn't work. The main parts of the image, which are the two girls and the guy walking in, are in direct sunlight, and it's ruined the photograph. There's too much texture in the image, and the shop behind the people is completely lit. I mean, if you can see the basket of books that are behind the little kid's head, if she was against a darker area, the picture would have been a lot better. So you can see by Sarah utilizing the shade, and in this case, me not utilizing the shade, how even with the same subject, the pictures can be very, very different. This was a, a local dog show. It was a really bright day. Sun was really high in the sky, really contrasty. And this was almost the last photograph of the day. I'd had a really frustrating afternoon, not getting anything that I really wanted. Pretty much everybody was out in a field. So there wasn't really any shade to use. As we were walking out of the showgrounds, I saw this guy and his dogs just sitting in the shade of the marquee. And there's only a little bit of shade. You can just see how much shadow there is there, but it's enough to give me the photograph that I wanted. This was taken at an agricultural show, very strong overhead light. There wasn't any direction to the sunlight. I've decided to look for what's happening in the shaded parts of the showground. And here we have three sets of people all eating or having their lunch, uh, all doing different things. And the body language is, is amazing. And what I really enjoy about this picture is they're having their lunch 12 feet away from where the public toilets are. Only in Britain would you get this happening. In Brighton, you can see in the background how bright it is. It's very, very strong sunlight. And I've just used the shade of the um, seating area in the pier to be able to control the image that I actually want to take. There's no point in taking anything out in the light because it's just too bright. But if I concentrate on what's happening on the seated areas, there'll be a picture there for me to get. And this is a similar case in Blackpool. It's a very, very bright day, very strong sunlight. But I've decided to work in an area which is very well shaded. Once I'm in that area, I can just wait and see if things will happen. And in this case, it did. You know, it was quite a nice picture here with the fortune teller having a bad day and the, the girls walking through in the background. It kind of makes a really nice photograph, but it wouldn't happen unless I decided that I was actually going to work exclusively within the shade. And in Bournemouth, we've got a, a guy here sitting in direct sunlight, but the shade for this image comes from his umbrella. And that's enough to allow Sarah to get the image that she actually wanted. If you have really tall buildings, you tend to get these sort of avenues of darkness. And in this particular case, the sun is striking the wall of the building behind this alleyway, creating this light area. So this guy is actually in the shade, but because the background is light, he's standing out from it. And I've just used his body as a silhouette to get an interesting composition. And we can take that a stage further. What's happened here is the subject is in the shade, but the background is in strong sunlight. So we get this contrast between the shaded area and the background. And in this photograph, the sun is just coming from the side and it's just illuminating this wall. And this guy is in the shade as he walks through the composition. The structure which is creating the shadow is creating a nice triangular shape within the composition as well. So it's one of those pictures that works really quite nicely. But it goes back to the same concept of working in the shade rather than working in the strong sunlight, which you haven't got a lot of control over. Here, Sarah's used a similar principle, but it's almost kind of like a reverse now. The, the sun is creating the shapes in the foreground as opposed to the background, but she's still working within the shade.
Another technique we like to use is to use directional light. By directional light, I mean light that comes from a strong direction, lifts the subject and doesn't give flat lighting. Here Sarah's used the really strong sunlight as it's come through the tall buildings in Venice. So you've got this very directional light coming from the right hand side. The light funnels through the alleyways. So the background is very dark and yet the guy rushing through, he's actually popping out from the, the background. And here the light direction is coming from the right hand side and it has allowed all the texture and the lines and the shapes to illuminate one side of the image and on the other side where there's no direct light hitting the boardwalk, we're getting a completely different feel to the image. So on the right hand side of the frame it's very dynamic with all these lines, the kids moving, the silhouettes and on the left hand side of the image it's kind of more subdued. So you almost got like two photographs in one here but that's only happened because of the direction of the light. This photograph of Sarah's, it only works because the light has got a lot of direction to it. It's almost like he's being picked out by a spotlight. You've got the sunshine, which is quite strong, and it's just illuminated him. It's got this beautiful rim light around him. She's managed to get the bird actually on the edge of that shadow, like we talked about earlier on. Here we've got a very strong directional light from the left-hand side, just illuminating this little old lady as she's looking at the comedy carpet in Blackpool. One of the things that we like to do if we are shooting and we have got this really strong light is to try and shoot as late in the day as possible so the light isn't too high in the sky because that can really create problems. Again, another photograph of Sarah's and what she's done here is she's used the light from behind her, but it's very low in the sky. You can see from the length of the shadows, it's very low. Sarah's just seen this scene, but the light has made it work because it's very low in the sky. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions at all, please let me know in the comments below and I'll see you on the next video.